My name is John O'Donnell. I work in Melbourne in Australia. Uh, I've been an orthopaedic surgeon since, I don't know when, uh, 1987. Um, came and did a little bit of work in England. That was the only time I lived in Australia the whole time apart from that. So I came and worked here for two years and then I uh, went back and started practice at that stage. And uh, so I did what everyone did then, which was to work part-time in public hospitals, part-time in private. And uh, until you can't stand working in public hospitals anymore, which happened to me after 17 years. And uh, so now I work just purely in private hospitals in, in, in Melbourne, in Australia. Uh, I only do hip surgery. That'd be about 80%, 85% hip arthroscopy and about 15% primary joint replacement, uh, which has been great. So uh, about the only area that I have any generality at all in now is that I work on both left and right sides and uh, I haven't managed to cut that down any further. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's the work part of it. I'm, uh, I'm married, I've got five children. So the youngest one's still at school, but the others have all grown up and gone off and done other things. Mm. But, uh, and that keeps me pretty busy as well. No, I didn't. No, I absolutely did not. Uh, I remember being in my, uh, in year 10 at school, uh, we were vocationally assessed. They had some person come, we did all sorts of tests. And the idea was that they would tell you what, your, what you were cut out to be as a result of you drawing funny shapes and stuff. And uh, generally this was a, a terrible waste of time. But I do recall being asked, you know, what did I want to do? I said, well, I don't know what I want to do, but I know one thing, I don't want to be a doctor. So somewhere between year 10 and year 12 that changed. And quite why, I'm not sure. My, um, my dad was a doctor, my mum was a nurse. I was surrounded by medical people. But I was quite convinced I didn't want to do that until right near the end of my schooling. And then the same thing happened you know, when I became a, an intern. Because the end of our intern year, they said we have to choose between doing medical streams or surgical streams. And right up until the closing time, I didn't know which one I wanted to do. And uh, so I just took potluck a bit, I think. I'm not quite sure what made me choose. And at that time, it was considered if you did surgery, it was because you were incapable and not smart enough to do medicine. So all of my friends said, oh, what are you doing that for? You know, you could have been a proper doctor. But they're not saying that anymore. <laughs> so, so I'm delighted the way it's turned out, but quite why it did, I don't know. Certainly, um, I didn't have this goal from early in life that this is what I was going to do. Just, uh, it just I took steps along the way, and as things appealed to me, I took them. So I started in 1990, and I was the second person in Australia to be doing it to any extent. So the first one done in the country was in 1978, but that guy did one and sort of did odd ones here and there. But I started in 1990 and it built. And I did it just because I was doing all sorts of arthroscopic things and that was the only joint I hadn't looked in and there was a patient who I thought seemed appropriate and so we did. But I did it, I learned by reading a paper and because there was no one to teach me, it did, the teaching didn't exist. Yeah, yeah they are. Because it's such a changing field and so Whereas if you're a knee surgeon, you know, the things that you do are pretty much worked out. There's some little bits around the edges that people argue about, but they're, to me anyway, as an outsider, they're pretty marginal. But in hips, there's just new things coming along all the time. So it's, no one has the chance to be static and get bored because every meeting you go to, there's something you've never thought of before that's come up. And it may or may not be a good idea, but at least it's something to think about. So it's constantly evolving. And uh, so I think it's a fabulous field to be involved in it. It'll be changing long after I've stopped. Most of the things that have happened I haven't predicted, so I don't imagine this prediction will bear any relationship to what actually happens. But I think there's, more, there's bits of stability things that are happening to, to try and get a better idea of what that really means. And there's a lot of work being done on that, so that will develop. I think the major thing that will change will be biologic things, so that uh, and cartilage regrowth in some form because that's what everybody wants. Everyone's working like crazy on that and there's so many things being tried, most of which I don't think work very well at this stage, but that'll change. And so not only will we be able to stop deterioration hopefully, but we'll be able to reverse things that have already happened and, th and that will transform it and become a really exciting thing to do then. My major ones, the things that have really changed and which are ongoing ambitions are really in terms of research and teaching. So I started having, having fellows come and work with me in 2007. 
And that really changed my life. And uh, I find that a really stimulating thing. Like I have a, a, at least one, sometimes two, up to four occasionally. Uh, people come and work with me for up to six months at a time. So there are all these new people I work with all the time. So it's really refreshing and they have lots of new ideas and they're, and they're really keen to learn. So that I find is enormous fun. And that keeps me interested in going to work. I think when you asked about getting bored, I, perhaps I would have been if I wasn't doing that. If I was just going and doing similar things day after day. But it's not like that because I have all these other people. And so they're combing through all the stuff I've done over many years and coming up with all sorts of interesting things uh, that we publish, but also change what I do as a result of looking back at what the outcomes have been. And so some of the things I thought were terrific turned out not to be so good at all. And other things that I thought we weren't doing so well have turned out to be really good. And so we've developed in all sorts of ways that, w that never would have happened otherwise. I say to them, I think it's a really exciting field to be in. Uh, it's something that's more difficult than you might think. And the fact that you can do knee arthroscopy does not make you a hip arthroscopy surgeon. The skills are different and you really have to learn it. So don't just take it up and think that you can do it because you're really clever and you're an orthopedic surgeon and you know everything and it's just like everything else because it's not. So you really need to work with somebody who's good at it, learn the techniques of it, more importantly learn how and, and when to do it, who are the appropriate people to have it. Then find yourself a niche and really go for it. And, uh, and I think because there's plenty of spots available and there's lots of different areas that are very underserviced now. And it's, for example, all the um, extra articular endoscopy that's getting done now, there are very few people who can do it. And so there's lots of spots for people who might want to take that on. So just go and learn it, learn to do it well, and then develop it. And then the other thing I tell them is when they start, make sure they keep records, keep, the, keep all the data from all the stuff you've done right from the start because I didn't do that. And I started in 2002 collecting. That means there's the 12 years before that that we've got no record of other than what's written on bits of cardboard and which would take years to retrieve. But since that time, we've kept everything. And so it's all electronic and it's all very accessible. And that's what gives us the opportunity now to do all the follow-up records mm -hmm. and the follow-up studies. So that's the one I really push at them because in Australia, there is no research ethos. And so you have to get them to start that.